Hey y'all, how's it going? This is George from Decker.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to fix your Windows computer if the display doesn't work. Your computer works, your computer turns on, but there is no display on your monitor. So in this video I'm going to show you step by step how to diagnose this problem and fix it eventually. So let's take a look. This type of problem is very common for Windows computers and it can be caused by a number of things. It could be that the monitor doesn't work, it could be the cable, it could be one hardware component in your computer that is faulty or doesn't connect properly with the motherboard. Regardless, in this video we're going to take you step by step beginning with the monitor and then ending up with the hardware in your computer and hopefully at the end we'll be able to fix the problem and you'll be able to see picture on your display. And hopefully I'll be able to cover every single possible scenario why your screen doesn't work. So without further ado, let's get started. Fix number one, check whether your monitor works. Now this is the most obvious step and the number one step that you should take if you come across with a problem like this. So go ahead and see whether your monitor works. Does it turn on? Can you change through the channels? Does it have VGA or HDMI input? So try to switch between those two channels to see whether you get any picture from your computer. In case you have another computer in your house, in case that's a laptop or a PC or a Mac, you can still disconnect the monitor to your current computer and try to another computer and see if it works. If you have a MacBook, then you may need to have an adapter in order to connect the display. In case you don't have one, then I have a link down in the description which is one that I will always recommend to get. In case you don't have another computer in your house, then you can always go and visit your friend and ask them if it's possible to test your monitor in their computer. If not, then you could go to the local library. There has to be a computer out there which you can use to test your monitor. And if you manage to test the monitor and you see that the monitor doesn't work, it, doesn't, it still doesn't have any picture, then it's either the cable or the monitor that doesn't work. Fix number two, check whether the cable works. If the monitor fails to work on another computer, then guess what else could be malfunctioning? That's right, the cable. So if you have another monitor and a computer in your house, take out the cable and test it to that monitor with that computer and see if it works. If, if you don't have another computer or another monitor in your house, then you can go to a local library or to your best friend and check whether this cable works with your monitor and the computer. I think this is the best way to check whether a cable works and if it doesn't, then probably you're gonna have to buy a new cable. And if you're looking to buy an HDMI cable to VGA or HDMI to HDMI, I have links down in the description where you can choose the cable that suits your needs. Fix number three, test your computer with another monitor. In case you cannot determine whether your monitor works, you can go ahead and use another monitor that you have in your house for testing purposes. For example, if you don't have another monitor in your house, you can use your own personal TV just for this purpose. For example, you can use your TV, connect to your computer and see if that works. If it does work, then something must be wrong with your monitor. Fix number four, are you using the correct HDMI port from your computer? If your Windows PC has two HDMIs, one of them corresponds to the graphics card and the other one corresponds to the motherboard. The HDMI port in your motherboard is gonna be useful if your CPU has integrated graphics in it. Otherwise, you're going to see a pure black screen on your display. So if you have connected the HDMI accidentally to the motherboard, then disconnect it and connect it to the other HDMI port and see if it can produce any graphics on the display. Fix number five, remove the memory sticks from your computer or if you call it RAMs from your computer. Now you may think that we go outside of the boundaries, but if the RAMs do, are not connected properly or they're losing connection with the motherboard, then the display may not work properly and you will end up having a black screen. Over time, the memory sticks may lose connection or some dust may build up around it, which can prevent or may weaken the connection between the motherboard. So what you'll need to do is to open the cover of your computer and you may need to use one of those screwdrivers in order to unscrew the screws which are around it. Of course, before doing that, it's very important to make sure that your computer is turned off and make sure to also unplug it from its power source. And once you do that, you'll see a lot of mess going on inside your computer, but it's nothing to be scared of. The big thing that you see in the middle, which has a fan, this is where the cooling system is located, and below that is the CPU. 
the RAM slots or the memory stick should be located right next to the cooling system. So you may see one, two or even four parallel components placed downwards. And you may have some handles on each side of those. This, these are the RAM slots. So what you need to do is to press gently on each of those handles on each side in order to safely remove the RAM. Do this on all the components and once you remove them, make sure to clean gently any dust that is built inside the slots or around it. Once you do that, plug in the ramps again inside and make sure to push until you hear a click. Once you do that, place back the cover, plug in the computer back to the power source, turn it on and see if this works. Fix number six, clean up your ramps. Over time, if you keep using your computer a lot, the bronze metal pieces which are on the one side of the RAM, which are also called the connectors, will accumulate black spots. And the more black spots you're gonna have in your RAMs, the weaker the connection will be between the RAM and the motherboard. And hence the motherboard may not even recognize them just because it cannot connect to the RAMs because of all those black spots. So what we're gonna do is to go ahead and clean the black spots in order to prevent any connection issues. And for this, all you need to have is a rubber and make sure it's clean in order to rub the dark spots off. Now there are more sophisticated material in order to do this, but a simple rubber is gonna do the job. So again, turn off your computer and disconnect it from the power source. Again, use a screwdriver in order to take off the cover if you put the screws back together. Again, go to the same position that we, that we spoke about earlier and remove the rams by using the clips on each side. They take one ram at a, at a time and gently rub off the dark spots. Don't put too much force on it because you may end up damaging the metal pieces. Just gently rub them off. Once you're done, put them back gently and make sure you hear a click sound when you push them downwards. Put only enough force until you hear the click. Then put the cover back together, connect your computer again with your power source and turn on your computer and see if this works. Fix number seven, remove and reconnect the graphics card. Now the same thing that happens with the RAMs will happen with the graphics card. Dust will accumulate over time around the connection areas as well as dark spots as well. So we're gonna have to do the same thing, remove the graphics card and clean if there's any dust around and also use rubber again in order to erase any dark spots that have accumulated on the pins. So again, follow the same drill, turn off your computer and disconnect it from the power source and again, remove the cover if you put it back in. The graphics card should be a big component which is connected vertically to the motherboard. And this is the one that you use the HDMI port to connect your to your computer with in order to see the picture. For this, you may need a screwdriver in order to remove any screws which are tied in to the graphics card. After that, gently remove the graphics card and see if there are any dark spots. Take the rubber and erase them gently. Again, don't put too much force in order to prevent any damages on the pins. Once you do that, see if there's any dust around the connections and the slot where the graphics card goes in. If so, make sure to remove it gently and once you're ready, put back the graphics card, connect the screws, put back the cover, connect your computer to the power source and turn it on and see if everything works. Fix number 8. Reset the complementary metal oxide semiconductor or CMOS for short. Now CMOS is going to be like a small battery that you use for your wrist watches. But, but what it does, it actually stores some of the BIOS settings. So if you have customized the BIOS settings on your computer and you have customized it how you want it to boot, over time these settings may become corrupt and some peripheral devices may not work, such as your mouse, your keyboard or even your display which is the current problem. So what we have to do is to go ahead and reset all those BIOS settings and see if we can get the monitor to work again. Now to do this, it's preferable to disconnect all your devices from your computer and turn your computer completely off and again remove it from your power source. Again open up the cover and go and locate a shiny metal circle thing on the motherboard. This is gonna be the CMOS. So what you need to do is to gently remove the piece by pushing sideways and downwards gently in order to remove it. Once you remove it, wait for a few minutes before you put it back. After that, reconnect the CMOS in the motherboard, put the cover back to your computer, 
Connect all your peripheral devices, including the monitor to the correct HDMI port, which is on the graphics card, connect it to the power source, and then turn it on and see if you can see any light on the display. It's important to say that none of your data that you have on your computer will be erased by removing the CMOS component. It's only gonna erase any settings that you have in the BIOS, so any customized settings. So for example, if you have made your computer to boot automatically from your external hard drive, by resetting the CMOS, it's gonna factory reset all the BIOS settings and then your computer will be boot from the internal hard drive. So that's a small example, but there are also so many other examples. And these are all the steps that you can take in order to fix the monitor. Now, if you manage to fix the monitor, then go down in the comment section and let me know which step managed to fix it. Together with this video, I have written an article which shows step-by-step -step on how to fix the display. So if I missed anything, let me know down in the comment section and I'll go ahead and add it on the article. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and don't forget to share this video to your friends in order to help them out to fix their monitor in case it's malfunctioning. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell right next to it in order to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and as always, I'm going to see you in my next video.